Hopefully you're having a beautiful day or night, regardless of where you are. We are streaming live. Uh, this particular program is really in depth, but I'm going to try to move as quick as I can. Probably one of the most important programs I've done so far. I'm going to go into a little physiology, but I'm going to try to explain this as easy and simple as I can about the calcium magnesium connection. Realize that magnesium and calcium uh, are two sides of a, what we call a physiological coin. Even though they are antagonistics, meaning that uh, one works with the other on different sides, but they also work with one another, meaning that you need calcium and you need magnesium to work in order to make these cells function correctly. Now, I'm going to move quickly through this. I'm going to try to explain it the best I can. Uh, here is a great, great program. I hope you enjoy this. Please don't, don't shut your, uh, your uh, radio off or your video off. You've got to really listen to this. This is really important stuff. Okay, let's look really quick. Let's do some quick review of calcium, quick review of magnesium. Then I'll talk about the correlation of how they work together, uh, what is actually happening in here, how we can take away, uh, this is pretty cool physiology, how we can take away muscle pain, how we can take away nerve pain. Uh, I have millions of people out there who tune in uh, through YouTube who have nerve pain uh, because of disc herniations, poor posture, degenerative joint disease, uh, spondylosis, uh, and the list goes on and on. So uh, we look at bone health, and obviously we look at calcium mainly for our teeth, our bones. Uh, you can read here, it does help control blood pressure as cancer and kidney stones and stuff like that. But uh, just get a general idea. I'm not going to go into depth here. If you look here, just some common foods. These are some common sh foods that mostly the greens you're going to get your calcium from. All right, you're going to go through this, come back to this on your own. I'm not going to go through this. We want to move quick here. Uh, this is the daily recommended RDA of calcium, approximately 1,000 uh, milligrams uh, as from 19 to 50 years of age, and it changes depending upon your years of age, but about 1,000 milligrams of calcium. So I'm going to move forward here. Magnesium health benefits, uh, we can read this, the importance of what it does, uh, maintains nerve function, uh, very important, relaxes muscle. Very, very important. That's something we're going to touch on. It slows down the heart. It makes you sleep better. It takes away arrhythmias, normalizes blood pressure. It does strengthen bones. You're thinking that just calcium strengthens bone. Uh-uh. Magnesium strengthens bones as well. Helps increase the strength and vitality of your immune system. Uh, these are some common foods of magnesium. There are more, but you can read through this and come back because I want to move through this very fast. Uh, RDA here, we're looking at magnesium. Women, about 320 uh, milligrams to men, about uh, 420, give or take. But I'm going to come back to that in a second. Now realize the issue here uh, with magnesium and calcium is calcium, we get so much of it from our diet. Magnesium, the problem is the soils. The soils is we're not getting the magnesium that we think we're getting. And this is the big problem. Uh, if we move up here, let me just come to here, vitamin D. Why do I talk about vitamin D? Because vitamin D doesn't work if you don't have magnesium. You can look at the video we just did before. It's on my channel. Uh, very important between vitamin D and magnesium. That if you don't have enough magnesium in there, if you're taking vitamin D, it's not getting, it's not working. Because magnesium takes vitamin D to where it can get into the cells and into the bloodstream correctly. Uh, it goes through a chemical process, but magnesium must be present. So we basically know a little bit about vitamin D. Vitamin D, the best way to get it is through the sun, but we don't want to get cancer. So we have to kind of balance out our sun rays. And you can look at the sources here and fatty fish is a good way as well as dairy. But I'm not here to push any of this. Uh, people like to supplement because of the fact that we don't spend enough time in the sun. It is a good idea to supplement a minimum of a thousand I use. I take 5,000 uh, because my vitamin D was really low and vitamin D is a serious epidemic when it comes down to uh, low, low values. And magnesium is another major epidemic. Let's go ahead and see if we can move forward here. This is our big topic today, calcium, magnesium. Unfortunately, the problem here is that when magnesium levels are low, the calcium's that's too high because we want at least a two to one ratio, two to one calcium, two, two to one calcium to magnesium. But I would even say more closer to one to one. And I'll tell you why, because if you have 
too much high calcium and little little bit of magnesium, that's when we start getting kidney stones. We start getting gall stones. We start developing cardiovascular disease. You think cardiovascular disease is from cholesterol? I mean, come on. This is a big problem right here. Excessive calcium. It doesn't know where to go. The, the kidneys will try to excre excrete, excrete as much as it can, but whatever's not excreted, where's it going? It's being laid down somewhere. Well, guess what? Magnesium prevents calcium from, from laying that extra calcium down into those particular areas. Magnesium is preventing it, as well as when you take vitamin D, vitamin K2 is extremely important because vitamin D and vitamin K2 go together. Uh, so that's you can look at my videos on vitamin K2. I don't want to spend too much time on there. As we move forward here, this is what we're talking about, atherosclerosis. You think it's all coming from cholesterol? Uh-uh-uh. There's no way in the world. Remember that uh, when we look at calcium, all right, let's look at here. Uh, we want that level of calcium as close as we can get it because if you look at this, and I'm going to show you in just a second, um, calcium exists mainly on the outside of the cells. Magnesium is on the inside of the cells. I'm going to go ahead and show you that in a second. Remember that calcium excites the nerves. Magnesium calms down the nerves. Calcium uh, makes muscles contract. Magnesium is necessary to make muscles relax. Calcium is important for re uh, clotting reactions, wound healing. Um, uh, magnesium keeps the blood flowing. So as magnesium levels are higher, it keeps the blood from thickening. And obviously when we have thickening blood, it's when we start developing clots and other problems like that. So it's very important that uh, you understand the difference. Uh, when we look at, uh, let's go up here. Um, I'm going to come back to this in just a second. Uh, if we look at the healthy cell and the unhealthy, the unhealthy cells, just remember this is from the deep, 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 deep cells of our body. We're taking a cell and we're looking at the physiology of it. To just picture that on the outside of the healthy cells, there's all this calcium because calcium stays on the outside of the cells. Magnesium stays on the inside of the cells. So what happens is when you have enough magnesium on the inside of the cells and the calcium makes its way through the cell membrane, the magnesium balances that calcium, okay, which is what's normal in that healthy cell. But if we have too little magnesium on the inside of the cells and we have calcium on the outside and that calcium makes its way into the cell, as you look to the right where the magnesium deficiency is, then we have too much calcium. Here's the problem. When we have too much calcium, this is when we get too much excitability of the muscle. So therefore, the muscle starts to contract, starts to spasm. We get too much excitability of the nerves. The nerves start to fire. They, okay, when people become anxious, when we become irritable, when we become tense, this has a lot to do with these un unhealthy cells that's going on with too much calcium in the cells and not enough magnesium. If we come back here, let me see if I come back here. All right, let me get to my point here. This is where I want to be. So when we, when we talk about this, uh, realize that, that calcium is necessary at the cellular level to contract. This is what fires the nerves. This is what hor how hormones are being secreted. Uh, this is how the inflammatory response is contracting. Uh, this is what it's all about. So what happens is if you take too much calcium, too little magnesium, over extended period of time, this cellular physiological imbalance between the calcium and magnesium occurs. And what happens is this tends to remain that way. So this is, if you look at many other uh, conditions where people may have, uh, let me come back here if I can come back. Uh, but when people are overreactive or they're over anxious or their muscles are always tense or they're always stiff, it may not be something just from the brain. I'm telling you that when you start increasing magnesium in your diet, these things start to relax. The nerves start to relax. The pain starts to subside. Yeah, there are other factors that go on with this of, of sodium and potassium, but I don't want to get carried away with that. Let's just talk about this. So this is one of the most important things uh, because of the fact that we don't want excessive calcification being laid into the, in the kidney stones. Um, uh, when it comes down to gallstones, when it comes to atherosclerosis, 
uh, when it comes to relaxation and pain and things that need to relax, to let you sleep well, to take away arrhythmias, to relax the heart, to slow the blood pressure down, it's all about magnesium. Magnesium is probably one of the most important minerals, three to 400 different bodily functions that's occurring in your body right now from magnesium. So the important thing here is you've got to really boost that magnesium up. Don't, I'm, I don't want to tell you what you should and should not do, but I wouldn't add calcium Vita, calcium minerals in my diet because of the fact that if our calcium levels get too high and our magnesium is not getting in and we're not boosting up that magnesium, um, it's a big problem. Uh, so I'm going to leave that with you and hopefully this will do you a lot of good. Uh, but I will promise you, you start increasing magnesium in your diet um, and you will start seeing amazing changes because of the fact that our calcium uh, magnesium levels are so disrupted, they're so out of whack, they're so imbalanced, and this is leading to a lot, uh, to, to millions and millions of people worldwide, a major epidemic of conditions that are being treated with medications, drugs, and they're not getting to the root of the issue, a very simple mineral that can make a tremendous change in your body. I challenge people out there because it's safe, it's effective, you're not going to OD on a magnesium. Uh, if, if it was me, i take about an additional four to 600 uh, milligrams grams of magnesiums. There are different kinds of magnesiums. There are torates or different things for the heart. There's lys glycinates and lysinates. Um, and again, I, there's information out there. I don't have time for this program, but please look at this program, share it, check it out. Check me out, Motivational Doc on Facebook. Leave your comments below. I know this is a big topic. There's a millions of people out, out there in pain, but I would love to hear your results by changing up your diet being smarter, doing the right thing, and hopefully getting the right results. Much love to everyone out there. We'll catch up with you next time. Bye-bye now.